Robbie Smith would, would, would paint pieces of his art, or he would write a booklet that would um, gather up stories that he wrote and uh, images, and then he would take a video uh, cassette and he would record the stories that he wrote to accompany the pictures. So, you sh so if you knew him well, he would not only present you with a painting, he'd present you with an audio cassette that he did uh, to accompany it, and people uh, treasure the audio cassette as much as the painting because they hear his living voice. Well, Robert E. Smith is a Springfieldian, and to the extent that Missouri State is a proud school in Springfield, of course we consider him our own. He had many relations with art and design faculty, and he was constant present on, presence on campus. He is, today, Springfield's best-known folk artist. His art is represented in museums from New York to California. And since he passed away, of course, interest in him hasn't waned. Uh, there's been a need to produce a retrospective on his art, on his work, and we're fortunate that Missouri State has an academic small press out of the College of Arts and Letters that was able to do a book, Robert E. Smith, that gathered together images from private collections in Springfield. The only book on Robert E. Smith that I'm aware of, one that is one that was well uh, needed at the time, and. Of course, we celebrate Robert Smith even to this day. If you look uh, downtown, you'll see the Robert E. Smith building, murals inspired by him. So Robert E. Smith, in my opinion, it should be an honorary alumnus of Missouri State. The thing to remember about Robert E. Smith is that he was um, institutionalized as a child. Um, we don't, we, I don't know what diagnosis he would have gotten now, whether it would have been mild autism, but it was at a time when um, family members didn't really have the, the, the resources to take care of, of children with special needs. And it was also at a time when people were readily institutionalized. So he was put in a mental institution as a child. And he was constantly escaping. Uh, because he liked baseball, so he'd escape to go to the baseball games, to go to the Cardinals games. And every time he would come back, he would be disciplined, and the way that he would, they would discipline him ultimately led to electroshock therapy. So he was um, wounded uh, in various ways. But people who are wounded are also given gifts. While he was, in the inst while he was institutionalized, someone introduced him to art, and it became a passion of his. Uh, they fostered it while he was still in the institution. When they let him out, ultimately he came to Springfield. For the first decade of his life, he would just paint on cardboard, and he would sell his paintings on the street, along with uh, self-published poems. And uh, people could buy his work for five, ten dollars, and of course now that would go up to five hundred dollars. But anyway, he was quite a character for anybody who knew him. Perfect for Springfield. A very interesting man, a very interesting story, and a Missouri State's fortunate to have been able to produce a book about him.